Well, hi everyone. It's Sandy, and I'm here again today to do another video. Um, what I'm going to do today is show you some differences between some of the different options in, in uh, watercolor paper. When I, I'm a self-taught taught artist, and when I began to learn about watercolor paper, well, about watercoloring in general, paper was one of my uh, big, big questions. I'm like, okay, well, what's the difference between hot pressed and cold pressed and, and the different brands and um, uh, what's right for me? It, and so um, it was a big struggle. And what I want to do in a series of videos now is I want to help the beginner to maybe um, make some decisions based on you know what what they see here. It, hopefully, this will help um, them determine. Okay, this is how I like to paint, so I'm going to choose this one, or this one's the best for me because I like to paint like this. And so, hopefully, I can I can steer you that way. I can't do a lot on these small sheets of paper, but I'm going to do the basics, which are um, how each each paper responds to wet on wet, um, dry on dry, and you know, so a couple other things. So, so let's get started. What I've got here is arches hot pressed, arches cold pressed, Fabriano's cold pressed, and Canson XL, which is a student grade paper, and it's you know, it's the one that you know they sell at Michaels, and it's very common and uh, very very accessible so you can get that um, you can't tell it from my papers here but the Fabriano is a lot whiter than the Arches and Canson it's a very white paper and I'm not going to be able to show that to you just uh, believe me that it's true because it is Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a wet on wet. So I am just going to run a wet brush across the top of each of these, trying to get the, about the same amount of water on them. What, you're, what you see with this arches right here, and arch, it's something that arches always does, is it tries to repel the water at first. You, you'll have it sort of like... Uh, well, like, like you're kind of kind of like you're putting the water over oil. And so that's something you need to it's it's fine, but just be aware that it's going to do that. Because if you try to just start your painting and you've got the water the paint all beating up, it's going to kind of affect what you do. Now, right now what's going on? I don't know if you can see this. The hot pressed is sort of the water is sitting up there on as a puddle, and I went back and I tried to take some off. The others, the water's penetrating some, but um, the hot pressed is kind of puddling, so I'm just going to go across a couple times on each one of these, and we'll see what they do. Trying, I'm really trying to get the same amount of paint, but you know, it's it's not 100%. Oh, that one doesn't have enough. Okay, so we've got wet on wet. Do I need anything anywhere else? This one might have been a little thin. Okay. So we're just going to kind of let that let that sit and do what it's going to do. When you do when you paint wet into wet, the paint will it it can flow as far as your water is. So I put my water to about this this spot here. So theoretically this can spread that far. This one goes, let me put just a little dash more on this and get it closer to the edge so that we can see what happens at the edge. And this one I went about here and the Canson I went about here. So already you can see that there's a big difference. You can see the texture coming up 
you can actually see the arches Franz imprint there. Um, but you can, can see there's really no texture. It's quite smooth here on the hot press. And texture, not quite as much texture on the Fabriano. And it's there's texture, but it's a smaller texture than the arches. So, okay. Now what I'm going to do is do some wet on dry. So to do that, I am going to get a lot of water in my brush and pick up some paint. So I've got a really wet brush here. And I'm just going to go across. Look at how that repels. Oh, it really repels. So in order to in order to get that arches to accept the paper, you kind of have to pre-wet it. So, wet on dry. If you haven't sized this paper, stretched it. Once you've stretched it and let it dry, it won't do that. But that, that is an issue with that paper. Okay, so here we go with the Fabriano. That one accepts it. And the Canson running out of paint there. Okay. Now what I want to do is I just want to loosen up one edge of this and just show how it moves into an area that you wet after. Oh, this one. I'm going to have to give this one a good amount here. It really takes some working on the arches in order to get it to think about accepting your paint. And that's why, I, since I usually use arches, that's why I started doing a thing where I take a big brush like this, an even bigger one, and wet both sides of the paper with it. And then it's ready. It's ready for me when I, when I want to go with it. Okay. So there we are on that. Okay. Now I'm going to do a dry on dry. So I'm cleaning my brush and I'm getting a lot of the moisture out. And I'm just going to take some green here and it's quite dry. I don't have a lot of moisture in there. And I'm just going to pull it across very lightly. I'm not trying to uh, that's what it does right there. And Fabriano and the Canson. Okay, so I didn't really leave myself very much room for this last thing I wanted to show you. Where am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to have to do it on the bottom. So what I want to show you, the last thing I want to show you, is how paints blend. How much the paper allows or encourages paints to move into each other. This really isn't a big space for this, but I will give it my best go. All right. So blending is um, one way is it's is to first wet the paper like I just did, and I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush, and I'm going to blend two colors: yellow and blue. And obviously, those are going to want to make go. Oh boy, this is really narrow. 
Yeah. I guess I better move that down. Okay, that's very narrow. So let's go there. And now I'm just going to get some cobalt blue. And I'm going to drop that in on the bottom part of that wet area and let them move into each other. I've got a, a oops, I just about put that in my coffee. Not the first time I've done that. Really a narrow spot there. I'm hoping that this is actually going to work because I didn't leave myself enough space. So what we need to do here is I need to let let them dry completely and I'm going to let them dry on their own. I'm not going to use a hair dryer and influence this in any way. Um, my journey through papers was I, I had started with uh, I thought that I wanted hot pressed because when I started painting uh, watercolor, I, I, I had come from a, such a meticulous drawing uh, background. And I'll, I'll show a few pictures while I'm, while I'm talking about this. And I thought, I, I really want to get that detail. I was still in that mode where I wanted to get a lot of detail. And I just... It didn't take me very long in watercolor to realize that I was kind of done with that. I, I'm moving through and getting a lot more looser the older I get. See? Gray hair. Um, the older I get, the more loose I get, and the more fun I have. I, I really did enjoy it. Was, it was really coming from my soul when I did the drawings, but... Uh, but I don't enjoy the meticulousness anymore. I, I, I don't maybe I don't have as much patience. So then I went into a Canson and I thought, well, I am not good enough right now to even justify buying arches. So I, I am going to just use Canson. And I really shouldn't have done that. If if there's one thing I would encourage you to do if you're just starting, just go for it. Get some get some good paper. You can cut it up into small small pieces like these five by sevens, and you can learn a lot on it. But you're going to see at the end of this that there's a definite difference in the quality of of you know what you, what you get. And look at right now how this is separating. It's it's taking on the texture of the paper, and that's probably going to stay like that to some extent. Um, the colors will move into each other nicer in a nicer way. So it's great to have some of this around for just like wondering what two colors mixed together are going to look like. That's perfect use for this. Um, or just practicing something, okay, how will I get this? Doing a quick study and, you know, how am I going to do this on my good paper? But when you really are painting something that you care about or you want to care about, give yourself a break and use uh, one of the higher quality papers. Right now what I'm seeing, I don't think you can see it, is the hot press has got quite a buckle in it. Um, there's a valley here and another one here. Fabriano as well. It's quite buckled. It's as buckled as the hot press. Now what that's going to do to you is, you can see it right here, the paint is sitting down in those valleys. And you're gonna, it's going to be darker in there. So... Okay, I'm going to just let this dry, and I will come back. Um, I'll come back, turn it back on if I see something I want to talk about. Actually, I see something right now. On the, on the hot press, the hot press is very um, temperamental with uh, back runs. 
and that's what it's getting right here. A back run is caused by the water kind of all ran off this hill over here and went over into, on, against the edge and was held there by the tape. Now the hill is drying and it's pulling that water back there, which is causing that back run. Some people call it cauliflower. Um, this one, the, the hot press is, is really touchy that way, so you have to watch closely uh, what's happening. Now, if you are getting that, you can go in and just with a pretty dry brush, work the edge a little bit and uh, try to erase that line. But it's, I think it's been like 99.9% .9 of the time when I've tried to do this, it, I'm not happy with, with my result. Almost, I think with my painting, it's almost easier better just to let that happen it, it's going to happen you can't stop it at that point and um, see what you can do with it maybe you could make it into a leaf or a petal of a flower or something in the picture you can use that um, I don't like paints painting to be messed with what I like in watercolor is you work with the watercolor. You put it on, you give it a suggestion of where to go, and you allow it to become what it wants to become. And that's what's so great about watercolor and so beautiful. It's, you know, with any other kind of painting, you're, you're putting the paint exactly where you want it. But with watercolor, you've got a co-artist. It is just the, it's just so awesome to work with watercolor because you just never know. It's just, it's just a great journey. Okay. I'm going to let this dry. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. And it has dried completely. Um, so let's talk about what we're seeing here now. The hot press has flattened pretty much all the way out. Right down here they're just a little lumpy but there was a lot of water down there sitting for a long time. The Fabriano is still pretty lumpy and you see, I don't know if you can see it moving, it actually wants to pick itself up from from the board. The Canson is kind of uniformly up but it's not really bumpy. This spot's higher, but it's not bad. And this, this is pretty uniform. Where I put the water, it wants to stand up, but it's, it's actually pretty good. Okay, so let's look at each one of these in, in a row. Okay, so this one, it blended the wet and wet. This is a schminky mm, Payne's Gray. Paints gray bluish. And it's actually really pretty how it blended. It blended softly and with really no hard edges, but it is holding some depth of color. So you, you want it to, in some spots, be you want it to be able to hold color or deep color, a value. Um, this one, even better. We've got um, we've got a lot going on there and it, for me, I, I like that. I like watercolor to express itself. I don't, I don't want it to be just real bland one color. Look what the Fabriano did. It just went woo! And I think I put it on pretty much the same. I hope I did. But So that's kind of cool. That's like a unique way to move color. And the Canson actually did quite well too. It's blended out and it's holding some dark uh, pigment there. So, you know, it's it's fine. Okay, now we've got the dr uh, wet on dry, where I just uh, pulled the paintbrush across, and this time, I, and this one I had to go several times in order to get it on there. 
and then I did a, a brush stroke of water on the bottom to let it pull out, see what it was going to do there. This one again, very smooth, really nice transition if you're doing uh, really detailed flowers or something like that. Really nice way to do it. This one, if you were going to do a really detailed flower, I think you'd have, um, you, it, this is, this lends it, itself more to a, a more painterly type of painting. Something that's just a little bit more expressive where you can get really realistic with this one. This one as well. Now look at all of this, everything going on here on the arches. The Fabriano, it's holding some depth of color, not quite as much as the arches, but it's quite smooth. It, it blends really well. So maybe getting more into the more detailed paintings here, you could, technical paintings, you could go with that. Canson, not at all bad. You've got some little speckles where the pigment has gone in, down into the paper and stayed there. It's actually quite nice. You don't have quite the color retention, the value retention, um, but it's good. It's great for, for playing with. Okay, now we've got the dry on dry where I just took the brush and I pulled it across and um, eh, not much different. It, it's, actually, it's actually not different at all from a very wet brush to a very dry brush on this Arches Hot Press because the, the paper is so smooth. This one um, <laughs> did what Arches does, but look at, look at how you could use that. If you were painting uh, a, a water and you had some blue-gray or something and you pulled it across a couple times, you would have all those speckles like the sun was shining on it. You can use that. And with arches, you don't have to allow it to do that. If you first just wet it, like I said before, just wet it, let it dry, it won't do that again. So, cool. But if you stretch your paper, you won't be getting that. So, keep that in mind. The Fabriano, it held its, its nice color. You see how the color is faded on this one? It's nice vivid color, but it's very smooth as well with the Canson, even more smooth and monotone. I, this is what I don't like. I don't, I want the paint to be allowed to express itself. Okay, blending. Remember I put, uh, I put water down first and then I put yellow and blue. And this one didn't really want to blend a whole lot. It's, there's botches of blue, there's, yellow, and there's some green. Though where it is blended, it's very pretty. And I could have helped it, but I didn't. I just wanted to see what it would do. This one blended quite nicely. A little bit of blue here where I had a lot, but you got a lot of green there. Not the best green, but that was because of my color choice. But look what the Fabriano did. It's got this, this really dark edge which if you're painting like a, a flower or something like that, you, you really don't want that because each petal is going to be outlined and it's going to look very unnatural. There was a lot of water here though and that, that's why it did that. But it's something to watch. Otherwise, it, it blended fairly well. Not quite as good as the arches, but it did fine. And the Canson as well. But the Canson, look what it did. It has these little ridges where the water just kind of dried up and receded and it left a ridge. Interesting. Um, could be used or it could be annoying. So what that kind of it could go either way. You just have you have to have to work with what you've got. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test something else now. I'm just going to wet a strip in these and see how the water lifts off. So what I'm doing is I'm just loosening the paint with some water and I'm just going to go back in and I'm just going to scrub it with, this is just a synthetic kind of stiff brush. Just 
give it a little bit of a lift here and see see if we can coax any to come off and the difference with a little bit of scrubbing how the paper handles scrubbing I'm just going to go in and dab and see what comes up now. Some colors are staining and some are not so much. And that's just, you know, that's something that you just are going to need to learn as you go on your watercolor journey. And I did not select these paints for staining or, you know, not staining qualities. I just selected them because I wanted to. So, okay. I didn't get, I got a little bit of the green off. And really not very much here. Off of the hot press. And I'm not, I didn't scrub it enough so that it happened but I have scrubbed oh maybe like three times that amount of scrubbing on this oh, hot press and it it starts to kind of get a little pilly uh, it didn't do it this time but it has in the past for me the arches cold press okay we've got some color removal here we could we were able to take the uh, lilac off the green came off almost completely and well all colors did on the Fabriano we didn't get any any pickup really on the gray a little on the lilac a little bit more on the green and this one actually did just as well as this these these are very comparable that way and I'm not feeling any any sort of pilling, any sort of pilling on these. Okay, well, I, I think that that pretty much sums it up. I hope that it helped you. I hope that you see something in one of these papers that that allows you to say, okay, that is that's what I need right now. And down the road, you're probably going to change, um, but. I hope it saved you some money and um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing some more videos for beginners. My next, I have three in mind. One of them is going to be about brushes, how to select brushes, which ones um, you should go for initially, and uh, palettes. I'm going to have one about palettes and paint. Paint. Um, the different kinds of paint that I have tried so far, and there are so many types of paint, uh, brands of paint that you can try. And um, so I, all I can do is talk about what I've tried so far, but I'll do that. So watch for those. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I hope it helped. Bye bye.